with that said, I'm going to just jump right in and I'm just going to start laying down paint. I'm going to try to keep it to a somewhat limited palette today and I'm going to do hopefully a lot of pieces. Let's let's see here. Um, what I have here is an already primed piece of watercolor paper, 140 pound uh, watercolor paper. And I have it primed and taped off so that later I can cut it down to individual pieces if it's something that I like, okay? So I'm going to start by laying down some golden fluid acrylic. This is Van Dyke Brown. I'm just gonna dribble a little. Hmm. All right, I'm telling you I'm doing that, but I'm not really sure that I am. I'm gonna dribble, there we go. Just a couple pieces. And before I even start moving that around, I am going to take a woody, a Stabilo woody, and just kind of lay some marks here, not really worry about what it looks like. The reason why I do this, and the reason why most people do this, is just to get something started, started on the page so you don't overthink what you're going to do with it. Here I'm gonna take a my my brayer and work it in. Not every single piece will have the same marks on it, which is great. I love that. I love different intensities, different different shading. All right, I think that's pretty unique right there. Hang on, let's see if we can work that out at all. I'm also going to spray a little tiny bit of alcohol on it before it dries completely. I'm going to let that set for a minute and then roll it out and see what happens. Sometimes the alcohol creates a pitted Oh yeah, there it is. Do you see that? It's getting kind of pitted right here. That's very cool. Uh, this is teal and again, golden fluid ac acrylic. I'm not suggesting you get golden fluid acrylics. I just happen to have a lot of them. And so I use them frequently. Any acrylic paints will work for what we're doing here. I think I'm going to grab a silicone paint shaper. This is a pretty large size one, actually. I'm going to take and move this teal around. Now, the interesting thing about this teal is it's quite opaque. So I, I don't want it everywhere because I don't want it to cover up all this gorgeous uh, Van Dyke brown base that we have. Um, but I do want to work it in a little bit into probably every square to some degree. And what I like about these shapers is that you can totally pull through to scrape back, even with opaque colors like this teal. You can scrape it back so you can see what's underneath without, without completely obliterating what's underneath. So right here you can see that the teal is coming, it's scraped back and you can see the woody, you can see the brown underneath it. Now, no rhyme or reason how I'm doing this, how I'm pulling these pieces together because when I actually go ahead and use this on a piece a year from now, a week from now, later this afternoon, I don't know when, I'll have completely different ideas about how to use it. And that's one of the, that's one of the amazing things about just painting papers like this. All right, I think I'm going to lay down some ink and then I'm going to let this set up. So which ink is this? This is the, it feels like this is a Van Dyke Brown. Um, so the Van Dyke Brown in ink form will have a different quality than the Van Dyke Brown in acrylic form.
and I'm going to use a actual palette knife, large palette knife. It's kind of overkill for ink, but I do like it. Look at that. It's going down through the paper. It's bigger markings. Um, couldn't really plan for markings like these too much. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I love that. Look at that. Is it? Blends out a little. Okay, just work it in. Maybe put a couple drops over here. Oh, I know what I want to do. I'm going to do a couple drops and water. If you can, go um, grab misters like this. I got these off of Amazon. You can find them probably in in drugstores or various places. It spreads the water out in a really fine mist. Oh, look at that, man. Look at that. Oh. Oh, I love that. Love that. And then I'm going to go back in with this palette knife again and kind of spread things around. And because I just love to experiment. I'm going to take this. So this one, same exact thing as this one. This one, I just keep distilled water in. This one, I keep isopropyl alcohol in. I'm going to spray it onto the really wet watery thing here, uh, area here and see if any, oh yeah, look at that. Can you see what just happened there? Let's see if I can. Do you see? Oh yeah. Oh, love that. Love that. Okay, I think what I'm going to do, maybe this is also matchy matchy. I'm going to start spreading it around a little. The Stabilo Woody, uh, one of the things that I love about it is that it's water soluble. And so as you can see here, the the edge of the line is is fading out a little bit and spreading. Gosh, I love that. So if you're wondering why I'm doing this, I'm going to do other pieces on smaller pieces of paper, but I wanted to show you this because this is a great way to potentially start a series at some point that's all associated by its underlayer. And that's what we're creating right now, a background and underlayer for later use. Okay, let me go put this over here to dry. It's another thing about uh, just creating backgrounds. You can just go fast, you know, you get it going. I'm gonna use a little bit of this Next time I do this live, I think what I'm going to do is make sure all my bottles open appropriately before I start. Uh, so this is Titan Buff, again, golden fluid acrylic, but I'm actually going to mix it in and I'm just grabbing, I'm literally just reaching in and grabbing the first tube of heavy body paint that I have. If you are painting with me at home, just use whatever you have. Use any color you have. These live events that I'm doing, the paint with me, is not necessarily instructional in, this is how you should do it. Not at all. Uh, this is just to give you ideas, to give you an opportunity to take a little while and paint and just relax with me. And um, I'm quite social that way, so I love it when I know that people are painting with me. So this is, I'm sorry, I didn't even say what this was. This is a cadmium red light mixed with the Titan buff. And it's kind of an interesting combination. One of the things I'm going to do, because this is pretty wet compared to 
uh, the larger piece that I was working on before. And the reason why is that I am holding the edge of this catalyst wedge really tight to the, excuse me, I'm not holding it tight to the paper. On the other piece, I was holding uh, the trowel really tightly across the paper, which helps to remove some of the paint and pushes it into the paper so it dries more quickly. This is going to stay wet a little bit longer. And while this is still wet, what I am going to do is I'm going to take, I have no idea what kind of uh, plant this was, but it came in a floral arrangement. Now it's just all dry. And I'm just going to kind of push it into this wet paint. I'm not really expecting to get a, a print um, oh, you know what I want to do here? What I'm trying to do is create some texture in here. So I'm just going to press, press this down in there. This is going to remove some of the paint around it. And also give me the opportunity to create another piece of paper too, by the way. Um, we, that experiment didn't work as well as I had hoped, but I'm not mad about it. All right, so let me take this wedge. Now, one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to pull all of it in together because I don't want the entire page to be the same. Although, I am going to show you a neat technique in a second. Okay, and I think I'm going to take a couple more drops of this Titan buff. Okay, that's a lot of the Titan buff, so let me do this. I'm going to take some of it immediately and just put it over here. <clears throat> All right, so here's a technique that if you don't know how to do it, I'm going to teach you right now. This comes from back in the day when I used to do custom finishes on furniture and cabinetry and walls. And one of my uh, specialties was doing Venetian plaster finishes. And so there's a technique called skip troweling. It's skip troweling. Oh man, look at that. Look at all of that really gorgeous background. I know some of you are hating this color. I get it. It's not a color <laughs> that, a, or even a color combination that gets used very often, but I guarantee you that's going to become some seriously sexy background paper. But back to the technique when I was doing the finishes, it's called skip troweling, right? And you get some paint on or plaster or whatever it is. And then, and then you just kind of tap on it move it to another place and then pull it, right? And when you do that, it creates this like, it's a faux texture. It looks like it has texture, but it doesn't really. Let me do this with this uh, knife here, right? And then you drag it across. And as you drag it across, it pulls the paint off the top, leaves behind this really beautiful textury thing. So let me continue here. I'd love to see some more questions or comments if this format works for you. If it doesn't work for you, I would want to know that too. Uh, I'm just sitting here playing and inviting you to watch me play. It's a little bit weird, but I happen to love watching people paint. So I think maybe I'm not the only one. All right, this here is my very precious quinacridone nickel azo gold and many of you probably already know that golden is no longer making this color they can't get the natural resources for it any longer uh, there is a way to make it and i'm going to show how to do that in an upcoming video i don't have the recipe in front of me right now and i don't want to guess and and have you get it wrong but this paint everybody loves this paint for a reason it's gorgeous it's this goldeny color. 
I think what I'm going to do with it right now is... Hmm. I'm going to use the paint shaper again. So this paint shaper still has a little of the teal on it and it's a little wet. So, we, oh yeah. <laughs> so the teal came off. It gets in there. Look at that. Oh my gosh. All right. So you see this quality that this nickel azo gold has? It's goldeny. It allows what's underneath to come through because it's so transparent. Um, I do, I love this, but, oh, okay. Can you see this? All right, this is exactly what I was talking about, the script, the, excuse me, skip troweling. All right, do you see this area right here where you've got this gorgeous little texture thing happening? Oh, wow, I have, I can't even imagine at this point what I will use this as the background for but I am excited about it for sure. Okay, let me pull it back up. I think I'm going to put a little more teal on here because I, I really, I was digging what happened there. All right, and I'm just gonna use the paint shaper again and just kind of skip it, see? Kind of. Oh, yeah. Again, just pulling when you have an opaque paint like this teal and you work hard to get it tight on the paper to pull it really hard, you get these really gorgeous depths. Now, I would say that this teal is a really hot color. I mean, it's too intense, really. And yet, I have a feeling that by the end of our session today, we're going to get to a place with it that we're all happy. Remember back, um, back when you were in school, back in the day when we had books that we carried and we had to cover the books with, you know, in my day, we covered them with uh, paper bags from the grocery store. Imagine covering your books with paper like this. Like, oh God, the idea of that makes me so excited. Um, you know what? I think I'm gonna let this piece dry for a minute. I don't want to get it too overworky and then lose the deliciousness that we have. And I'm gonna come back to this piece. I'm gonna have to make a little room for it here. Okay, and you can still see that over here where we sprayed the alcohol and the water, it's still wet, but wow. Look how beautiful that is with the kind of the drippy, inexplicably drippy edges. Uh, I think I'm gonna go in here right now with some Titan Buff and I think ink. I'm going to roll a little, oh, wow, okay. I didn't mean to do that. All right, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to salvage some of this and see these giant clamshells. I have a whole bunch of these and I actually like using them uh, when I paint. Sometimes I mix paints in them, other times I just use them for residual uh, paint because I put too much down. I'm trying to get away from using single use plastics for everything. It hurts my heart. Oh man, because this is building up. I'm getting more and more excited about potentially what could come up. I love seeing the history. I love seeing down through the layers. Um, you can still see the woody stabilo in there. Um, you can see the the uh, banding brown and the teal. It's all really coming together nicely. All right, so here's an opportunity 
for different different type of skip trial. I don't know if you can see these little tiny drops of the Titan buff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much lay me get a little of this off here. Okay, I'm going to try to lay the silicone paint shaper as flat as I can against the paper and just very delicately put pressure. Yeah. Okay. And then pull it in the opposite direction and it, it creates all that little mm, dreamy bits, bits of, of texture there. Mm, I really do like that. Now, if you are not loving this, it's okay. <laughs> you know why? This is never going to end up looking like this when it's all done. It, I mean, when it's done for today, it may look something like this. But when I go to use it as the background for a painting or a monoprint over it, or maybe something stenciled, I have no idea what I'll use it for, but I do know this for a fact. It's going to be infinitely more interesting as a finished piece because of all of this craziness that we've done at the beginning, right? All of this. It's not that it's careless. I do care, but I don't really care that it looks good now, right? I just, I'm just moving paint around. It feels good on my hands, feels good in my body. Uh, it gives me ideas and one of the main things, and you may have heard me say this before in other videos, the experimentation. Oh man, do I love that. Like it's so fun for me to experiment with these, um, with different products, with different, tools and techniques, just seeing what water can do on any given project, right, is pretty, ugh, pretty amazing. All right, so here I'm just using a palette knife and uh, some of this um, Amsterdam Deep Gold. I used this the other day in another uh, video and I still have it out on my table. Uh, and I am just gonna flick some I hope I don't get this all over the camera. All right, there we go. Wonder if the camera's picking this up. You'll let me know. Okay. So um, a question that I got is, am I planning out any of this? And I am literally not. I am, wow. I hope I didn't get that on the camera. I am just going through and I have a whole bunch of materials. I can't show you because I can't move the camera right now, but over to this side, I have a ton of materials and I am really just grabbing them, just randomly grabbing them and putting them all together. I think I just want to push this around a little, get a little hint of the metallic in there what that will do with subsequent layers is it'll help things uh, pop more in terms of texture. And that's why I love using metallics in these. I don't know if it's picking up well on camera because of the lights in here, but mm, I forgot that that was still all really wet. Well, that's kind of interesting too, though. Oh, man, look at that. Now I have to play with it. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. It. Happy accidents. Happy accidents. That's what a play day like this is all about, right? So what I was saying, what I was trying to say, what I was getting to is I don't have a destination in mind. And truthfully, it's all going to be by gut instinct when I actually stop working on this today. Um, my gut right now says, let this baby dry a little. 
before we continue on with it. And I'm gonna grab another piece, this piece here that we worked on. I got so excited about. I think I'm gonna drop some of that gold on here. Okay, when you're doing a, a, a background day like this or an abstract or just a paint paper day, use whatever you want for sure, but I do encourage you to try to keep within a similar color palette. Oh my gosh. Can you see this? Can you see what happened here? The highlight from the metallic is totally bringing up all of the quote unquote texture underneath. It's, it's gorgeous. So I wish you were here in the studio with me, painting with me right now. So fun. All right, what was I saying? Oh, about the color palettes. So I try to keep a fairly limited color palette each time I do a session because it's easier later when I'm making collage, say, or uh, a canvas piece for me to go back and pull all the pieces that are quite similar. They may look very different, but they have the same or similar color profile so that they can go together. Um, I particularly like doing that whenever I do a a grid collage. If you haven't seen any grid collages, let me know and I will do a video on that. I can't think of the name of the woman who I first saw do it, but I will find it and put it in a link in the section below. Her work with these little grids gets me so excited. I, if you don't know me well, if this is your first time seeing me, you might be already picking up on the fact that I absolutely love painting papers. Like it makes me excited in, in incredible ways. This here is Van Dyke Brown uh, Golden Fluid Acrylics. And the reason why I'm putting this on here right now is I wanted to create a tonal depth in this paper. And again, I don't know how well you can see it because the light in here is pretty intense. But if you look right here, because we have the gold underneath and we have the uh, nickel as a gold and we have uh, the teal, it's creating like this almost like a coral reef. If, if you could see it right up close right now, you know, obviously I'm going to have to scan these in and make them available to you because you're going to want to play with this. <laughs> I mean it. You're going to want to use it for what? I don't know. I think this, just looking at it right now, oh, look at that, would make a gorgeous Christmas ornament. I don't know if you can see it, but if, if I glued this onto a bulb, I think, oh my gosh, beautiful. I, I really, <laughs> guys, it's not me being egotistical. I get that this is not a piece of art. Um, it's not intended to be, it's literally intended to be just an abstract base layer for something later. But I still do get excited about it because with each pull, with each stroke, with each drip of paint or ink or texture, you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen. Now, maybe there's some artists out there who do exactly this technique every single day and they can predict with absolute cert certainty uh, what's going to happen next. Boo, that's not fun. I don't wanna know what's happening next when I'm doing this kind of exercise. If I were doing a portrait, I would kind of wanna know what's coming next. But again, that's not the function of this. I'm going to be doing some jelly print uh, videos coming up. 
But I want to tell you right now that the reaction I'm having to this particular piece right now is a very similar and exciting reaction as I have when I pull from a jelly plate and something incredible comes out. That's, that's what I'm feeling about this here. Don't worry, more work going into this, but for right now, I'm gonna put this to the side. These are super intense colors and I'm feeling like, should I mute them down a little bit? I'm thinking too much about this. So you know what I'm gonna do? I am just gonna take some of this, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some of this Van Dyke Brown ink and I'm gonna just squirt it on, not a little amount. And then I am going to take my spray bottle, bottle of water now, if you do the spray bottle of water, make sure you just fill it with distilled water unless you're using a ton of water every single time you're in the studio, uh, cause it'll get gross, right? And you don't really want it to get gross. But some of you are saying, now this is gross. And I'm going to encourage you to reserve judgment <laughs> until I decide what else I'm gonna do here. I think that just a touch or two of the teal. And uh, for those of you wondering, I have, I'm just placing them here. I don't really have an intention for those, the exact spots that they're on. Um, just kind of want them to wiggle around a little. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another piece of uh, newsprint. I haven't told you already, sorry. Um, this is newsprint. This that I'm putting on top is newsprint. And all I'm gonna do is the zoom, zoom, zoom. No, uh, all I'm gonna do is just kind of rub it in over each other. Very interesting what happened here, okay? So at the moment, I like this better. No shade on this one, we're getting there. But uh, I kind of like the quality of this one. Like this is much more structured. This is much more fluid as it should be because it's literally what we used was water and fluid. Oh dear, we have some um, Titan buff on here. That's all right. Okay, keep that there. Let me put this here. Um, I don't want to overwork that one there because there is something about the quality on that, that like airy type quality. But I do want to move some of this around. And uh... okay, we just had a moment the camera uh, clicked off because it was overheating. Uh, I am filming in my studio our air conditioning has been out for two weeks and it's summertime in southern california so uh, it got a little hot in here the camera didn't like that so i had to wait uh, and what happened right after it turned off i guess i was still moving paint around so you can see i just used the paint shaper and I just pulled those little pieces of teal and Titan buff around and created, you know, a really nice smudgy, dreamy look. I'm much happier with this red than I was. Um, I'm still super happy though with what's happening here. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where this goes next, if anywhere. I mean, sometimes you just have to know when to stop too. That may not be my forte, but we'll give it a whirl. Okay, so I'm back here um, and really love this piece. I'm a little reluctant to go too much further into it. You know what I would like to add though is some Payne's Gray. Uh, you may have heard me say in other videos, um, I do use black, uh, actually I use black kind of frequently, but my preferred favorite air quote black is actually Payne's Gray. 
And uh, Payne's Gray, if you're familiar with it, is, and if you're not familiar with it, more importantly, is like a, uh, like a deep blue, almost a navy, but it's super sheer. And uh, up against the right things, it looks black. So I think, I just wanna kind of smudge it around. I'm pulling it really, really, really tight. So it just kind of tones um, what's underneath. And I don't want it to cover everything because I'm really gaga about a lot of what's happening here. But I do want some depth of color, maybe a little more depth of the color. You may have guessed throughout this session that I adore using the Catalyst Wedge, and I will tell you why. Out of all the things that I use in terms of tools for spreading paint around, I feel like I have the most and least control <laughs> over what's happening when I use a Catalyst Wedge. And it, it's hard to explain, but I prefer as I stated earlier, I prefer not really knowing what's going to happen next. I don't know, I have a very heavy hand today, I guess, with the, um, with the gold. I think we're gonna put just a touch more teal and maybe hit it with some water, question mark? And this time, I think I'm going to use the Brer. Oh. oh, what? Okay. Do you see how the gold is pooling? Um, mm. Let's see if I can... Okay, I don't want that to go away. But I do like this. Check this out. See the uh, teal and gold that I have on the brayer still? And then I'm going to bring that right over and just pull it right over on here and make more use of it. Um, I think working on multiple pieces at one time is super fun. I'm going to grab my isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to sprinkle that on there so we get that beautiful water marking. Um, do you see it? And I think, just I'll pull it out a little, I, I, you know what I'm not loving is the harsh line that the, the Brer created in a couple of these spots. So I'm going to hit it with just a little bit more alcohol. What is happening there? Do you see that? I can't tell if that's pooling or I'm just going to kind of pull it through. All right, so this is starting to actually resemble some patina, like a copper patina. I don't know if you see that. I'm seeing that in the field here. I have a video that's coming up um, where the whole video is spent creating patinas, real patinas and uh, what we'll call faux patinas like this. I just want to remind you that when I started this, this was not at all where I was going, but I love where it's gone. So um, let me just pull. I don't want to work it too much because there's certain qualities that I love in this and I don't want to ruin them. So I am just going to know when to say no. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to come back to this piece. What does this need? What does this really need? What do you think this needs? I know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to grab one of my water-soluble graphite pencils. Right, and I'm going to do my Jackie circles, the perfectly imperfect circles. I'm going to just do it right over this piece. And um, I don't know if you've seen in other videos that I've done. Um, I love using the water soluble graphite because it creates a smudgy factor. Like watch this. Okay, this is just a water pen. Literally just a empty plastic water pen that I got off of Amazon. 
pan is filled with distilled water. And when I put that water on the graphite, it makes it just a little bit smudgy here. You know what? You'll be able to see it better on the um, Titan buff part here. Look at that. Like, see? Oh, I love how that turns out. I don't know what it is about that. I think it's the unpredictability of the line. Can keep going back in with a little more water over here, over here. I don't want to do it to all of them because there's still paint to go on here. I'm certain of it. If you don't have a water pen, you can just hit it with some water and then just smudgy smudgy as you go. Hmm, that's not smudging so much. I wonder why. There we go. There we go. Now, for all of you who think that I just ruined it, I may have, but how do you ruin something that's just going in the underlayer? Hmm? Oh my gosh. No. Here, let's get that seashell. Let's get some of that residual paint in there. All right. Oh, look at that. Look at, oh, there's still some uh, of the um, Payne's Gray in there. Boy, I should have just called this the Catalyst Wedge Show. I am, for whatever reason today, the Catalyst Wedge is my default. I hope you're enjoying my work with it because somehow I just can't seem to stop using it. Okay, again, if you're watching this live, go ahead and ask questions in the chat there. Um, I am online and watching that. Even though I'm sitting here painting, this was this painting part was pre-recorded. Uh, but anyway, ask questions because I'm here with you live and I will answer them right away. And if you're not here live, if you're catching this on replay, that's cool too. Um, I will answer your questions as I see them. So please ask away. All right, I'm going to do a little fancy uh, spraying here. I'm going to take a little tiny bit of this um, Van Dyke Brown fluid acrylic. I could use the ink. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to hit it with... Uh, I'm going to use airbrush medium. All I'm trying to do here is thin this out without ruining the integrity of the um, the paint, but I do want it watery. Okay, so now that I've got that and I've mixed that up, I'm going to hit it on this piece. I'm going to try not to get it on the camera. Okay, lots of sprinkles everywhere. What do you think? Should I just leave the sprinkles as is or should I do something with them? Ha, huh. it's a trick question. Of course, I'm gonna do something with them. And if I don't like it, I'll just come back and re-hit with, oh. but I do like it. Do you see that? It's almost like um, coffee stained, which is also another really fun technique. Um, Apparently, I'm going to be making videos on everything because there's too much to love. All right, do you see what's happening here? Do you see the the pitting and the... It's it's still the drips that I threw on there with the, you know, with the stick. This is just a little silicone cup and stick. All right, so anyway, uh, I just love... Again, it's the same type of quality that I keep talking about. There's kind of this depth. But what I like about this piece is as much as there's going on in it, and there's a lot, right? We've got the pencil marks. We've got some teal and some of the cadmium red sticking out. We've got the, what I'm going to call the coffee marks. They're not, as you know, but all that. But it's still pretty neutral. Like, this is still pretty neutral piece given all that went into it. I think I'm going to just let this be. All right, so I'm bringing this piece back. This piece needs something in it. It needs a lot of things in it, um, even for a background. I mean, it's a great start. It's fine. I think I want to add some of the Payne's Gray. Let's start with that. 
All right, let's start with the Payne's Gray. And tell me, should I use the Catalyst Wedge to move it around or should I use the Brer? And I'm just saying those two. All right, I'm gonna do, so this is another paint shaper, silicone paint shaper. As you can see, it's pretty small. Um, and can make some marks with it. You know, I don't like that. No, I want something bigger. I want a bigger movement is what I want. I want it, so I am going to go back to the catalyst wedge. I think we all kind of assumed I'd get back there anyway, okay? This is a lot of the Payne's Gray going down. But I'm okay with it. Let me get the alcohol. So one of the other things that the alcohol and the spray will do uh, is when you put it on, you start moving it around, it will pull up some of the paint, break it up a little. So, okay. Gonna grab a chip brush, just hit it with some more alcohol and I just wanna break up that line was a little bit much for me. Um, oh, I know what I want to do. Here, let me grab another piece of newsprint. You just kind of pull up some of the wetness that's here. Yeah, see, it kind of just mats it down, mutes it down a little. And as I keep rubbing, I don't know if you can see this, it's pulling up some of the paint, um, some of the droplets from the alcohol, you just let it sit there. When I go over it, you'll see it'll pull some of it up. And that is also another uh, quality that I really, really like. All right, so this is the area where I sprayed it. So if I just go over it, just give it a little elbow grease. Okay, can you see it's lifting up here? creating really interesting texture. All right, let's see what else we can do with this. All right, so I am gonna get some of the Payne's Gray, even though I know some of you think what I've done here is not the right thing, but I promise you it is all going to be okay. All right, and I'm gonna hit it with water. One nice and wet as I move it around. Okay, that's kind of cool too, by the way, just having the droplets, except that it's gonna take forever to dry. But I'm going to remember this for another experiment at another time. Do you see what I'm talking about here? It's like little islands around the paint droplets, which is a pretty cool look. I'm gonna use the giant brer. Oh, wow, that is a lot. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna have to pull some of this off because it's too much even for me. Uh, but I do like this quality of dark depth-ish that the Payne's Gray is adding. All right, hang on. I'm gonna use that piece of newsprint that we just used a second ago. And I am going to try to pull up some of this. Yes, look at that. Okay, this feels like it's getting a little muddy. However, it's not a finished piece. It's just a background. So I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes and then make some decisions about it. So let's see where we're at. Here is that neutral piece that I actually like it a lot more than I would have anticipated. I'm gonna put that to the side. This here is the piece that I'm going to call the patinaed piece. Um, I'm, I'm digging it, I really am. But I wanna add, 
I want more usable space on it. So I think I'm going to add a little, you know what, I'm going to add some of the quinacridone gold, um, but just tiny little drops because again, they're not making it anymore. And once it's gone, it's gone. And even though you can make your own, making your own will never be exactly the same. No shade on making your own. It's just true. I mean, this is a a truly superior color and a really great product line. Again, I want to be really clear here. Use whatever paints you have. It doesn't matter. I like it. I really like it. All right, so I'm going to put this one to the side. I'm not going to touch it anymore because I'm happy. And I am going to bring this red one back because I think we can do some things here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the airbrush medium. I, again, I'm only doing that. No airbrush qualities whatsoever. It's just to thin out this Van Dyke Brown and yet still have it keep its integrity because I'm also going to hit it with some water. And if you hit it with too much water, thins it out too much and, and then it can craze or crack and we don't want that. All right. And I'm just going to pull it through. Okay. I'm just going to say that I don't think I can deny my passion for the catalyst wedge. It just makes me happy every single time, everything I do with it, it makes me happy. And I'm just going to sprinkle this on. And hit it with some alcohol. How about that? And let it rest for a couple of moments. And then... Yeah, I like that this has kind of an aged look. Hmm. Lots of texture happening. I like that. I don't love it as much as some of the others. I'm going to be honest about that, but I don't dislike it either. And I guess that's kind of important. You know what I've decided I'm going to do with that blue piece? The big, big blue piece. It needs a couple things. And I just decided that I'm going to put some cadmium red in here. I've got it out. I might as well. If I dislike what's happening, I can always go back and get rid of it. And he use a spatula. Or as my son used to say when he was very little, the spatula. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this works for me. All right, so what I've done here is I'm just tapping. I can't show you this on screen because my palette's not right there. I'm just tapping some of the cadmium red on the back of this trowel. And then I'm just kind of tapping it on the paper and then spreading it after it's been tapped because I don't want a huge spread of the red. Yeah, I did that but I want some and I want it to get into some of the texture that's already there. I don't want to make a whole big thing about red um, because on this piece, it's not about the red. Now I'm just circling around. I'm going to grab some of this um, leftover Titan buff. And then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to break up some of this because that's an awful lot of blue and such. Make it a little bit. Okay, this is the skip trolling again. See that quality that's coming up? Okay, just by adjusting the pressure that you put down on the trowel 
you can get a completely different look and depth of the paint. Um, like if I pull it really tight, it's going to be thin and it's just going to tint what's below. And if I continue to skip it over and use very light pressure, it'll take, it'll stay really opaque where you can't see underneath, which adds some super nice variation. Okay, one of the things I'm trying to do is not get all these cornery corners uh, between the pieces. Um, I'll show you once this is fully dry. We'll pull off the tape. I think we'll pull off the tape and hope that the tape actually comes off nicely. <laughs> you never know. Um, we'll do that. So you can see the working copy of what I have for going on in the future uh, with these backgrounds. Okay, so for now, I am just going to let that dry. This is one piece as a whole. It will look completely different as six different pieces. And that gives me the opportunity for six different backgrounds off of this one sheet. So I love doing the taping off, although it does look like I did a pretty awful job with it steering the tape. Look at all of that underneath. But it doesn't matter. It's all getting caught up anyway. So here's a trick on pulling paper, or excuse me, pulling tape without tearing paper. Couple tips. First tip is hit it with a blow dryer first. That's what I did here. It's coming off nice and cleanly. Happy about that. Again, everything you see underneath actually came from me not ensuring that the tape was down fully before I started. But another way you can usually clean or remove tape cleanly is to very gently, I don't know if you can see here if my hand's in the way, pull the tape back on itself, right? Di not up, don't pull up, pull it directly back on itself. And you always want your fingers pretty close to where you're pulling from, right? And Usually if you do this, this is an old painter's trick, meaning house painter. That's how they get such clean edges. And then I'm going to go ahead, because you need the separation to see the unique qualities of each background you painted. And the great news is not only are you going to end the day, if you do this, with at least six pieces, six background pieces, um, if you don't love them, no biggie. You can paint right over them, all right? So look at that. Let's look at these as, actually, let me cut these two. Okay, I'm not worried about them being the same size. I'm not really worried about anything. Okay, so here's one piece. It looks kind of nice, right? As a background. Here's another piece and another. You can see they all look different even though they were cut from the same piece. And if you want to go micro, let's do this. Let's put this piece here. Actually, let's go back to this piece because I see an area on this piece that I'm wild about. And you could check out and see what it would be like if you cropped it and framed it. So what I'm going to do here is I have just a little mat board. This is tiny. And I would just go over it until I found an area that I really liked. If this were going to be a finished piece, maybe that, maybe... I kind of do like this because it's got sort of the whole spectrum of everything we 
we put on there. We got a little bit of that red. We've got the teal and the Titan buff, right? So if you can imagine, pretty neat. Okay, so that's six backgrounds. Oh, look at that. I loved this. I absolutely loved how that we got the watery marks. Love that. All right, so those are six backgrounds that we just created today. Six. And then we have the other pages that we, papers that we worked on. So we had this one that's really very subtle and nuanced, but it, it does contain all of the colors that we used throughout. I mean, the, the paint's gray, only a teeny tiny bit of it's in there, but it's still in there. So it's unified with this piece. They're not the same, certainly not, but they could work together. Kind of cool. And they don't have to work together. Then there's also this piece, which really I'm, it's, it's growing on me. It really is. In fact, I don't know if you can see this, but I kind of see a poppy here. Do you see that? So I don't know, maybe I'll do something with that. Maybe not, probably not. I don't usually do representational things, but you never know. And then there's this piece, which did turn out to be my favorite of the day. Uh, may use it for something, may not, we'll see. May crop it down, see all these spots. Now look at that, wouldn't that be something? You know, don't have to do anything with it at all. Just enjoy the experience. I will be doing some more in the future. I may change the format a little bit, I'm not sure. But uh, every once in a while, I would love for you to join me and paint with me.